Uh, so I'd like to welcome Wim Hendricks, Mark Crosser, and Enzo D'Amato to the stage. Uh, Wim, uh, Wim, Mark, and Enzo will be presenting 10-minute lightning talk, and we will take questions after all the lightning talks are done. So, do we have Mark Crosser? I'll see you. Oh, uh, behind you. Up, up. <coughs> and, uh, up, up. All right, so let's start with Wim Hendricks. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> we have the clicker. All right, yeah. Uh, thanks for coming uh, and thanks for uh, in, uh, having my session. So I was building an MCP server and I thought, well, you don't see anyone <laughs> in this room. I thought it would be good to share uh, the lessons that I learned by building it. So I don't know, uh, before I start, is who doesn't uh, or who is not familiar with MCP or doesn't have any clue of haven't heard about it uh, before? Is there anyone? Okay, so there are some people. And then secondly, are there people who actually have implemented it already or have experiencing uh, with it? Ah, okay, so that's cool. So we have uh, a little bit of both. So first of all, what is uh, MCP? So MCP is a protocol called Model Context Protocol. And so what it actually uh, is doing is when we, when we interact from, let's say, you, uh, people know about ChatGPT, right? So you basically, when you interact with ChatGPT, you build your context and then you go to an LLM and some sort, right? So what MCP as a protocol is targeting to do is basically how do you bring like external tools or external data into that conversation? So an MCP is a protocol uh, developed by Anthropic that basically it's, it's an open source protocol and it's targeting to actually uh, extend that context with some external data through, the com uh, through a protocol which is basically interacting uh, with your MCP server, right? That's what it's, what it's about to do. And so if you look to the slide, so there is a link uh, to the uh, presentation if you go to MCP. So I tried to capture a little bit what are the components. So that is basically three things that they define as terminology. One is MCP host, which at the end of the day is your AI application. Right? And then you have an MCP client and you have a server, right? And so how the protocol uh, works is you have basically a transport, which is, uh, and that is two types of transports. One is standard in, standard out, which is actually built basically for local operations. So you can interact with your server locally on your machine, as well as you have a streaming implementation of a protocol. So you basically have an HTTP streaming towards that server. And that's basically what I used uh, as a basis, right? Because uh, typically I wanted to build it for, let's say, infrastructure management or infrastructure operations. They also, so the data uh, layer is basically built on JSON RPC. So they use JSON RPC as a way. And then you actually have a set of messages to actually interact with that, right? And so they recently also extended it with authentication. So now you know actually the thing that actually interacts with the client is authenticated to the server, so you basically now have the ability to actually say who is actually interacting with my server and what it is supposed to be able to do, so you can actually build authentication rules and stuff like that uh, on top of that. They have a discovery mechanism, so the discovery mechanism is basically a way to actually discover the capabilities of the MCP server, so the discovery is at the moment not discovering the servers in general. So you basically still have to say which server you are talking to, but you basically have the ability to actually discover the capabilities of the servers. And so MCP has basically three sets of uh, capabilities. One is tools, the second is resources, and the third is prompts, right? So these are the capabilities that you implement on the MCP server, and then the client discovers that through the protocol, and then you can use things. And so what you typically do as your AI application you then consume uh, typically the tools or the resources or the prompts that you have to expose. And the goal is to actually uh, use that external data that the protocol is actually uh, implementing. And then you can build an AI application that is actually consuming that, right? So the nice thing is that uh, given that there's a lot of hype in AI, right? So the ecosystem of tools and SDKs is big, right? So if you look uh, at the bottom, so you basically in any language that you uh, defined today, you can find an SDK that actually uh, supports the protocol and you can actually use that. And I did that. So here you see, so I use Rust as the base, which is a bit of probably exceptional because most people use Python. 
uh, I'm assuming. But so if you build a tool, so this is what you actually have to do, is you basically build the description of what your tool is about, right? The second thing that you do is when you implement your tool, you actually build a JSON schema, so, it's, uh, so which is defining the input parameters that your tool has. And there is optionally the output parameter that your JSON schema defines what the tool actually gives back. So that is not mandatory, so it's optional. And then you build the business logic what your tool is supposed to do, right? So in this case, the tool is very easy. So what my server is doing, it's actually an infrastructure management system, right? So you can say source of truth, does orchestration type of things. Uh, so what I actually did, and this was one of the, the, the experiments that you have, is that the which tools do you expose to that system in order to actually leverage all the data? Because you have a bunch of APIs, like IP address management, VLAN management, uh, rec management, uh, uh, VLAN, so service management and stuff like that. So how do you actually make that work at scale? And so I, did, I ended up in actually only building three tools that is able to manage my whole infrastructure and basically using that to interact with that system, right? And so that's, I, I will uh, go a little bit more into details on what I did and how I did it, did it and the approach that I took. But uh, one of the challenges is, of course, if you expose too many tools, the context becomes big and your uh, AI application can start to hallucinate. So because it has to figure out which tool it has to pick in order to do the job, right? So that is the challenge. Now, how do you, so the other thing that is important in my experiment or in my implementation, I use standard clients. So in other words, so in this example, what you see here, this is cursor, right? So, but you can do it in VS Code or you can use other tools. But so the first thing that you have to do is you have to say, where, where is your server? So in the case of uh, cursor, you basically have an mcp.json file in which you put your URL and then the token uh, if, you, if they implement OAuth, you can use OAuth, but if, you, if they don't, you can actually implement your token, and that token basically then says what are the capabilities that your server supports and what are the resources and the RBAC rules that are associated with that uh, communication, right? And so the nice thing is then, okay, you can interact with the system uh, through natural language. So you see on the right-hand side, I basically said, okay, what are all my IP addresses or my IP uh, prefixes that I have available into my system and it goes and figures it out and it actually puts it in a nice Excel sheet or whatever you do, right? And the, the challenge with the implementation is typically how do you implement it that it's actually pretty accurate and calls the right tools and the right data with the right credentials, right? So, and, and that's basically a little bit what you have to architect. Now, it's gaining a lot of traction, and I don't know how many tools or how many MCP servers that are available today, but it's a lot. And I try to uh, get a bit of a reflection of why is it gaining so much traction, right? And I, I, for me, there is basically three reasons. So reason number one is we talk natural language with the system, right? Because today, every server typically have its own DSL or its own API system or its own capabilities, but now we can inter interact with it with the language that we are now talking about. And so that is helping a lot to get adoption or understanding of what your tool is about. The second thing is for me, it's, it's openness, right? So what you have today is that we typically build servers or API systems and if you build API or AI tools inside of that server and, and someone who is operating the network has to implement 10 of these servers, you actually have to learn 10 ways to interact with AI, right? So with MCP, you have one protocol and that single protocol allows you to interact with all of these servers. Also from a client point of view, it basically allows with a single protocol implementation to interact with all of these servers so in essence, it's kind of an abstraction on top of the API. And as a result, you see that it's very easy to implement and it's very easy to expose and then consume. Now, what are the, the lessons that I learned implementing it? First of all, it's extremely easy. So it took me like less than a day to actually implement it. Um, but what you see is that not all clients support all the capabilities, like OAuth is not there, right? 
There is a streaming capability inside. Not too many people implement that, right? Or too many clients implement that. And so what was also very hard for me is what is interesting is when the client disappear, how do you know from the server? So there is no real protocol to do like keep alive or handshake and stuff like that. So I was hoping the streaming capabilities would give me that, but it's actually not the case. And then the big challenge I think is how do you architect the context to keep it small, right? Because the bigger you, uh, the more information you put inside, the more chances you have for hallucination, right? But also it consumes more time and more tokens. So that means it becomes more expensive to operate. So the challenge is how do you reduce the context in order to actually give the right answers, right? And what I did for that is basically uh, as I was saying, I have three tools. One of them is actually discovery. And so that discovery provides the context and I try to uh, contain it such that it actually was very easy to understand what are all the capabilities that my server was exposing. And as a result, I only have three tools, which means that it only has to pick uh, the, uh, the tools that is relevant for the job, right? And that was actually one of the approaches that uh, is interesting. Now I am, because I used the standard clients, I'm constrained to the client's capabilities that are supported. So the next thing that I will do is actually build uh, my own client implementation and try to see whether I can optimize even further. But right now my results are pretty uh, 90 to 95% uh, accurate when uh, I'm interacting with the system. The last thing I will say, and I have one more second, is um, that what you see a lot of people implementing MCP servers in the wild, right? So what I learned is that for me it becomes a feature on top of an existing implementation. And the reason I'm saying that is because I, we are talking about who does what when and all the credentials and what are the identities and, and, and so on. If you implement it as a feature on top of an existing uh, API server, you get all of that for free and including logging, tracing and stuff like that, right? So, and that's uh, it. So if you, I also uh, wrote uh, what I just talked about in, in an article. So there is a link uh, here and thank you for your time.